Okay, welcome to our next one. Today we're doing chicory. As you can see, these were collected in July of 2012. Uh, the one we're going to use today is the longest one that I have. Here. It's got a, a pretty good bend in it right here, as you can see as I spin it. So it's going to make for some interesting turning. This spindle here is almost 24 inches tall and at the base it is half an inch. As you can see I took the bark off the base end, that's our usual thing. It's mated to this western red cedar base reload with a notch we're going to put some jute in the notch and we're ready to get started I'll be floating near the top because it's so crooked Most of the time, chicory is a very fragile, easily disintegrating stalk. This was collected green and put away when it was in its prime. Have a look. Oh, and I knocked the coal out. We have a coal, but I kind of blew it out of the notch. It's hiding behind the the jute. Give me two seconds to set that up. Okay. I blew it out of the notch. Here. And there we go, chicory. Whew. Chicory, as you may know, is a coffee substitute. You can find it usually in the uh, health food stores or health food aisle of a supermarket as a coffee substitute, like that. All right, let's keep going. All right, and welcome to our next one. And today we're attempting pile wart. This is a uh, half inch diameter base end. As you can see, it's mated. It is a true pith, okay? 
I've shaved most of the bark off. It's not fibrous, but we like to clean that up. We're doing Western Red Cedar, and we're going to do this one here with the half inch socket base hole there. You can see there's nothing in the notch. And uh, let me just clip the top of this here. This is a very fragile stalk, and what happens is most of the times when this dries, it uh, starts to uh, uh, shrink inward and leave these star-like ridges, much like lamb's quarters, much like amaranth, plants like that. So you have to be careful when you're collecting the the power work and how it dries. So we're going to put a little bit of jute in the notch area to take up space. Okay. This is a, uh, a shorter spindle. It's uh, just over a foot, just over 12 inches. Trying to get as much rotation as I can. So we got a good dust pile, getting some good smoke. Oh, and we got our coal. So there's pile work, ladies and gentlemen. Give me a second here. Words. A real pithy stalk. Very fragile. Have to be very careful with this. All right, let's keep going. Okay, and welcome to our next section. And uh, if you remember my story from way back in the beginning about the mugwort and my friend in Germany telling me that mugwort really really needs to be uh, it needs to disintegrate a little bit in the weather <clears throat> in order for it to be able to be used for a hand drill uh, so that it will lower its density <clears throat> well these ones that I've selected have also been not weathered <laughs> uh, so they're still fairly dense and uh, so what we're going to be doing today is uh, since these are beautifully nice and straight when I collected them, uh, we're going to be doing a mouth drill. Okay, so uh, the diameter of this one at the base is exactly three eighths of an inch, which, as you can see, has been cleaned up. And you really want to clean up the mugwort because that stuff will really uh, the bark will come off and kick everything around. Now again, when I'm scraping, I'm making sure that the end is completely round so that there's no sidewall friction. So I rounded off and greased the brace end already. So this is 18 inches. Pine base reload. We're not going to put anything in the notch. We're just going to let it fill on its own this time around. So oak, uh, pressure mouth brace. Back that up a little bit. Okay. 
Almost. Stopped a little short. go mugwort mouth drill that wasn't completely straight because it was like kissing a jackhammer which is not fun for your brain knocking around your skull what's great about mugwort is that it's so abundant I mean once it starts growing along places like sides of highways and stuff it just takes over, so uh, it's very hard not to come across my work. It's just everywhere, at least here on the East Coast, especially in Germany. All right, all right, let's keep going. Okay, so I'm gonna make this really quick because it's like 20 degrees out here and it's February. Here we are on the edge of a cornfield. Far. Clear that lens. We're on the edge of a cornfield, and here is some mugwort growing here. But I say we have two different kinds. We have what I call brown, which is standing mugwort, next to gray mugwort, which is uh, fallen and starting to decay. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is collect some of these and show you some of the difference back at the fire dojo. Okay, be right back. Okay, so we're back at the fire dojo and we're looking at two samples of of mugwort now over here I have some really tall ones here and they are uh, what I call the gray so these ones were somewhat broken laying uh, on the ground not flat on the ground where they're absorbing water but they're off the ground, but they're not still connected to the uh, their roots and uh, standing straight. So these ones here I call brown ones, and if you notice, they have much more seed heads uh, still on them, and their color is a little darker. But what we want to do is investigate the difference between these two because uh, the gray ones, the ones which have been weathered a little bit more, uh, this is really the difference between doing a hand drill and having to use mugwort for every other kind of method, mouth drill on up. Okay. So let me get set here. So, Let's do the brown first. And the brown, as you can see, has seed heads still on it. This was cut because it was still standing in the ground. So if we take this and we break it, it still uh, wants to connect together. You can see that. But if we take the gray, which has little or no seed heads on it, and as you can see, it is a different color. If we put these side by side, there's the brown, there's the gray. 
And if we snap this, it snaps clean. Okay. So let's snap the brown again. And let's snap the gray. You don't just see a difference, you can hear a difference. So the gray, having been weathered enough, is good enough for hand drill. And what we're doing is we're coming around full circle. When I started talking about hand drill, I told the story of the mugwort, how my friend from Germany told me, yeah, it needs to be weathered in order for you to do a hand drill because I was never able to get a hand drill because I was always collecting brown mugwort in which the density was too much for me to do a hand drill or at least for my, my size, my constitution. So following his advice, I'm collecting what I call gray mugwort. Um, so these terms are my own, brown and gray. Uh, this one we're going to try here today is 18 inches. It's just a hair over a quarter inch in diameter at the bottom. As you can see, I took the bark off. Mugwort has a little fibrous bark. It's enough to ruin things if you don't take it off. We're going to use this very small section of western red cedar to do our coal today. Now, mugwort come in... in in larger diameter, still come in three eighths, half inch. Today we just happen to be doing just over a quarter inch. So what's expected today is that I'll get a lot of good rotation on this because it is a thinner diameter. As you can see there's nothing in the notch. It was mated, by the way. Correct me if I'm Did a lot of good spin on that. You can see the smoke piling out. Let's take advantage of its thin diameter. Get some good rotation. We got a coal already. Nope, almost, sorry. I saw smoke coming out of it. Just pop. Much better. <laughs> Sorry about that false start there. All right. So I talked about mug mugwort as a hand drill. Well, there it is. There's the proof. All right, let's keep going. All right, and welcome to our next section. And today we're doing late flowering thoroughwort. Okay. Uh, from my work, uh, I drive up and down South Jersey quite a bit. In fact, almost daily. And in, uh, I would drive up and down uh, a major highway in South Jersey called uh, 295. And all along the entire length of that 
uh, highway in the late summer, fall, and early winter, you could see the flowers, the bloomings of uh, the late flowering thoroughwort. It's all over the sides of the highway. I didn't recognize it at first. I didn't know what it was. So obviously I collected some, identified it, and it turns out to be late flowering thoroughwort. It's a fairly dense plant. It almost reminds me of uh, mugwort. Mugwort is fairly dense. This one is too. Uh, so we're going to give this one a shot. So we're not, obviously we're not doing hand drill with these specimens. So uh, pine base reload. You can see nothing's in the notch. It's mated. Oak. Push them up, brace. I am going to put a uh, paper towel in there. I'll take up the space. Okay. Oh, by the way, this, uh, this spindle is, uh, oh, that doesn't help. The spindle is 14 inches long and the diameter is 3 eighths of an inch. You can see it's round, bark is taken off, it's mated, top end, the bark is removed and it's rounded and it's greased. And by the way, this one is really nice and straight. So there's two annoying things about mouth drill. One is your face is stuck right here and the smoke goes right into your face. Uh, the second is the, the vibration that is caused if your spindle is not, if your axis is not perfectly straight. The axis on this one is, is very, very nice. All right, let's get this warmed up and ignited. You know what, we're going to get rid of that paper towel since we got pretty low in there. Let's get rid of some sidewall friction. The deeper you go, the more sidewall friction is a concern. We don't want sidewall friction. That slows us down. So if I see any brown on the sides, I know I need to get rid of that. We only want friction on the bottom. There's a little bit of button in there. Because it is a pith plant. Let's put the dust back. What's left of it anyway. Warm it up again, give it another shot. We're getting pretty low. Alright, let's have a look. And here's our thoroughwort, late flowering thoroughwort coal. After we balanced out some of those variables.
good size one too. Right. Leap flowering thoroughwort. All right, let's keep going. Okay, welcome to our next one. And what we're doing here is some late flowering thoroughwort, but these have been sitting out all winter, which means they uh, have lost some density. They've lost uh, some of their hardness. The ones I had collected previously were collected green and put away, which means they are more dense, th that they are harder and therefore we did uh, a different technique with them, which allowed for more pressure. But because these have been sitting out, we're going to do or attempt a hand drill with this bunch. So here with this one, I've taken all the bark completely off. It's pretty fibrous. So here we're just down to the wood. It is a pithy stalk. Okay, you can see it's mated. All right. Uh, our base today is uh, some cedar. I think it's incense cedar. I got it at the hardware store. As you can see, there's nothing in the notch. All right. So this one has a little bit of a bend in it. You might be able to see as I spin it. So. All right. Late flowering thoroughwort, let's give it a shot. It's already mated, so we're just going to get this sufficiently warmed up. our coal. Late flowering thoroughwort. So what happened here is much like the mugwort in that uh, you really have to let it deteriorate in order for it to work. Let's keep going. So what you're looking at is my supply, 
my bucket of sweet clover. It's mostly white sweet clover. And uh, collected along a few highways and uh, mostly in July. So this one was collected July 6th. This one was collected July 8th. There's a yellow sweet clover. And uh, so what I'm going to do is, these are really tall, so what I'm going to do is prepare these now that they're dry, since it's January. It's uh, six months later. And uh, so I'm going to get these ready for, uh, to do hand drill. All right, be right back. Okay, so I've uh, trimmed the sweet clovers. On the left here, I have the white sweet clover collected on the 6th of July. And here I have the yellow collected on the 8th. Um, as I began to trim them, they're all 18 inches, except for these shorter pieces on the end. Um, can you see the difference? Here's the white. Here's the yellow. You see what I see? See there's um, the black spots, a deterioration there, but not on the yellow. Even though they're collected within two days of each other, um, I'm going to say that the, the time is, is negligible, but uh, you know, like a banana that starts to you know go, it has these spots, but the yellow doesn't. For some reason I don't know why and I've never looked it up and I'm gonna see if I could find anything uh, on the internet regarding that but and we'll see but um, all right well let's get started let's start making friction fire with these sweet clovers we're gonna do both by the way here we go okay so we're ready to try a white Sweet clover, bow drill. Here's our spindle. Here, this the uh, the brace end, which is greased. The uh, base end of the spindle, which, as you can see, is mated to a pine base reload. We're using our lignum vitae pressure hand brace. My usual bamboo bow. Now it's uh. It's not a perfect axis, as you can see, as I roll it. So it was a little tough getting it to go. Um, but it's got a pretty good thick wall, which is nice, even though it's a, a hollow. And I have to tell you, I, I, I would never, ever condone or recommend smoking of any kind. Pipe smoking or any kind. But uh, I have to tell you, the the smoke of the clover is one of the best smelling I have I have uh, ever come across. If I had a choice of tobacco ever, it would be clover. I think from this point on. Takes a minute to get this started. I have to find the, the axis on this thing first. There we go. There we go. I have nothing in the notch, in the height. I think I'm just going to fill it with its own dust. Again, this is the white sweet clover. As smoke goes, this is one of the best smelling I have to say. Okay. And there we go. There's our white sweet clover coal. Let me narrow in on that. Give me a minute. 
I'm doing this upside down. see this is the one with all the banana spots on it I'll call it okay all right let's do the yellow all right so we're ready to get started on our yellow sweet clover this is the one without all the the banana spots on them I put a black mark on top to uh, Make sure that's the brace and I don't go putting that where it shouldn't be. So using the same devices, this one's much straighter than the than the white sweet clover. So its axis is much better. Both of them are just under half an inch. Definitely greater than three eighths though. So it's like right in between. It was a tough to size. Again we're doing pine base reload. You can see there's nothing in there. Again, I'm facing the notch toward you. Not that you'll see much, but... Alright. So this one will start off a little... should start off a little easier. A little smoother. And the smoke smells really good. Not that I would recommend it. That's really vibrating. Hold on a sec. Cole, give me a minute to, again, I'm doing this upside down. Oh, I blew it out. So there's our coal, there's our yellow. Sweet clover. Okay. All right, let's keep going on the clovers. Okay, so we're ready to begin our white sweet clover hand drill. As you can see, this is the one with the banana spots on it. And we're going to shove a piece of, this is a pine base reload, piece of uh, newspaper into the notch to re reduce the height. Okay. Um, for the base end of the spindle, you can see it's already mated. I took the bark off uh, the bottom part so it doesn't interfere. And we're ready to get started. It's not perfectly straight, but its axis is pretty good. Let's get this warmed up. We're getting some good smoke and some good dust. And we have a coal already, actually.
That was quick. Really like this clover. This stuff is fantabulous. That's not a real word. <laughs> go. White sweet clover. Handro. Let's do the yellow. Here we go. Okay, so we're ready to get started on our yellow sweet clover. You can see this one does not have the banana spots on it. Unfortunately, this one is has quite a bend in it. As you can see as I turn it between my hands here, that's quite a bend. But this is the straightest one, unfortunately. So again, we're doing pine. It's uh, made it together, has a notch in it. Newspaper, fill that space, just for laughs. To increase the height of that because all of these pine uh, base reloads are all five eighths of an inch in height. I'm gonna see if we can't get this one going. This one's going to require some technique. You can see the bend in it, I'm sure. Get this nice and warmed up here. Let's start piling it on. I shouldn't have lifted up, but it's good you see something like that. Let's try again. Okay, so we're ready to try that again. Try not to do anything as silly as accidentally lift up like that again. Oops. I've done a few handles in a row, so I'm a little, a little tired. So that energy va variable is definitely coming into play right now. To warm this up all over again. Fill the dust in there all over again. All right, let's have a look. And thankfully, because <laughs> I'm really tired, we have a coal. And here's our yellow sweet clover. And I'm calling it a knife. <laughs> There we go. Yellow sweet clover. Uh, I think my new favorite. Just because uh, the smoke is uh, is more than tolerable. It smells good. All right, let's keep going.
Okay, welcome to our next section. And uh, here we're doing Daisy Fleabane, which is in the Aster family. This bunch was collected uh, July 6, 2012. And uh, I have about 10 here. Okay, but one of the good ones out of the bunch is this one. It's approximately 18 inches. I cleaned it up a little bit. Uh, its diameter at the base is between one quarter of an inch and three eighths of an inch. So um, we're really starting to push it. Because my, uh, at least my favorite size diameter for a hand drill is about three eighths of an inch. So this is a little under what I would like. So we're doing pine again. As you can see, there's nothing in the notch. Okay, it's already mated. You can see I stripped the bark off the bottom part so that doesn't interfere. I round it off the top so it doesn't cut into my hands. Uh, took any um, remnants of branches that were sticking out, took them off so it's smoother, I should say. So let's take a little bit of paper towel and we're just going to shove that into the notch to take up that space. All right. Let's back this up just a hair. So we're just warming it up with a little bit of floating. Getting a little bit of dust. So I think we're going to try to start to to ignite it. And I think that's got it. And there we go. Daisy Fleabane. Give me a second here. It is Daisy Fleabane, Daisy Fleabane on Pine Base Reload. All right, let's keep going.
All right, and welcome to our next section. And what you're looking at is curly dock. Some specimens of curly dock I've collected um, in the month of July. So here, July 5th, here, and then in other areas, collected on uh, July 8th. Some really nice long ones here. Okay. And one I collected on the on the sixth. So I got some really good ones here. These are over two feet long. These ones here. So I'm gonna get some good ones out of these. So what I'm gonna do is cut these down, throw them together uh, in some better bunches. Pick out a good one, and we're gonna do curly dock handrail now okay be right back okay so I've trimmed down the curly dock and bundled them into other sections with rubber bands I still kept the same dates on them for the appropriate bundles and uh, so I've selected this one to be our hand drill as you can see I took the bark off the end and rounded the end of the um, what would be the brace area uh, so it doesn't hurt my hands too much cleaned it up a little bit it's not perfectly straight it's got a few bends in it where the branches come off so we're gonna do pine uh, I still have to mate it together and put a notch in it so I'm gonna go do that and uh, we'll be right back Okay, so um, we're going to try a dock bow drill first. So here's our spindle. Here's the brace end. It's greased already. Here's the base end. You can see it's made it already. You can see I took the bark off on the end. Here's our pine base reload. You can see nothing's in the notch. It's already mated. bamboo bow and lignum vitae push your hand brace I'm going to put the notch to the side so it doesn't, the unilateral force doesn't go into the notch. That's always annoying. I'm not going to put anything in the notch. I'm going to let, when you do bow drill, um, the dust fills up quite easily. And you don't need to fill that space. Let's have a look. And there's our coal. It's on the side. And that is Curly Dock. Spindle. So what's the diameter of that? What do we got? We got half an inch on there. All right, let's keep going. All right, so ready to get started on our dock hand drill. This one's 18 inches long. You can see I took the bark off the end. It's somewhat mated. I rounded the top so it doesn't cut into my hands when I'm floating. 
we're doing a pine base reload. You can see there's nothing in the notch. We're gonna fill up the space a little bit with paper towel. Alright, this is uh, not the same one you saw before. This one's a little bigger. Uh, I wasn't trusting that one that's under 3 eighths of an inch. This one's a hair over 3 eighths of an inch at the base end. So we're going to do this one instead out of the lot. So let's get this. Myself some space. Get this sufficiently warmed up. So we're getting some good dust. Have a look. No, not quite. So I'm going to try that again. Um, I left. I pulled the new uh, paper towel out, and I have a pile of dust, so I'm just leaving the pile of dust in there. You can see it's not smoking. Try again. Get this warmed up. See what we got. And we have us a coal duck hand drill. Very nice. That one really made me earn it. <laughs> I love a challenge. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, welcome to our next one. And today we're doing <clears throat> elderberry. This is the only uh, specimen I have I meant to go back and get more from the shrub, but uh, I never did. And now it's it's January. It's too it's too late to go back. Um, but this one, the diameter at the base is uh, between th uh, three eighths and a quarter inch. So it's right in between there. And again, it's it's smaller than I would like. The only advantage to that is. Uh, I'm going to be able to spin it faster 
it's going to have more speed because the diameter is smaller. We're going to do an Atlantic White Cedar uh, base reload. You can see there's nothing in the notch. You can see it's mated together already. I'm going to take a little piece of pith from a, some wood section and put that in there just to go up like two millimeters. It's not a lot. All right, so let's get this warmed up and igniting. Not let it cool down. Let's keep it going. Get a good dust pile in there. I think we have a coal already. Yes, we do. Well, that went sufficiently well, I have to say. Elderberry. Very nice. Very quick too, right? All right, let's keep going. All right, and welcome to our next section. And today we're doing ragweed. So these were collected at the end of the summer of 2012. And uh, these are all beautiful specimens, two foot specimens of giant ragweed. And I've selected this one. It is also two feet long, 24 inches. And as you can see, I clean the bottom, clean all the bark, it's nice and round. It is pithy, it's not a hollow. Cleaned up the top a little bit. In fact, clean up a little bit more. So we're doing pine base reload. You can see there's nothing in the notch. I'm going to put a piece of paper towel in there just to raise up the space a little bit. All right. And uh, as you know, ragweed is uh, one of those plants where if you have allergic rhinitis, it's a real pain. So, runny nose, watery eyes, those kinds of things. It's really bad. You know what? I think I'm going to flip the camera on its side. Just give me a second here. Just because this handle is so tall. And then... looks better. That's a better view. All right. Let's see how we do.
Okay, so I've changed the base reload to Atlantic White Cedar, which is just a hair softer. Okay. As you can see, that's brand new. There's no dust in the notch. And it's really cold. So I cut this down again, uh, remated it with this base reload. And we're going to give it a shot again. Those fibers keep coming out. Let's just put a little bit of paper towel in there. Just a little bit. Let's get this heat up, heated up again. Fibers keep coming off. They'll destroy your coal if you're not careful. The thing about the ragweed too is that it cuts into the wood and makes a button. So you have to be very careful that button doesn't get too deep. You start to get a lot of sidewall friction. All right, let's have a look. And there's our ragweed coal. That one made me earn it too. Love a challenge. Giant ragweed, another plant that has annoying qualities for humans, but uh, it can get you fire, so it has a good side. So, all right, let's keep going.